The Ukrainian president is increasingly pointed in his criticism of the West. NATO countries have supplied Ukraine with much-needed weaponry, but no fighter jets or air defense systems, and no answer to Ukraine's call for military intervention. Andriy Bukovic is the charge d'affaires at the Ukrainian embassy here in Ottawa. Hi, Mr. Bukovic. Good to have you back on our program. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Bukovic, we have heard the response from, from NATO countries in the past and then echoed today, for example, by Mr. Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of NATO, that, you know, supplying those things that Mr. Zelensky is calling for, that President Zelensky is calling for, would be seen as escalatory and, and something that NATO countries need to avoid doing, that is, avoid escalation. What do you say in response to that? Well, uh... What we've seen that for the last three decades, Russia does something horrific, not because of what NATO has said or done, but because NATO has not done. And we have to be absolutely clear about that. Uh, looking at uh, this NATO summit, there is definitely a good thing. We see a growing solidarity and unity among NATO members when it comes to the question what Russia does in Ukraine, and how to deal with Russia reinvading Ukraine and Russian war crimes. This is a key difference with 2014 when Russia occupied Crimea and Donbass. We also see strong statements by NATO against any Russian threat uh, of the use of chemical, biological, or nuclear weapons or related materials. It means Russia will fail to accuse Ukraine in usage of such weapons. However, a strong statement would be it may not necessarily stop Russia from fabricating and using false flag operation using prohibited weapons. They already bombarded Kharkiv, Mariupol with cluster and phosphorus bombs. And uh, though today NATO and G7 statements were reinforced by adoption of UN General Assembly resolution, which received 140 uh, votes in favor and only five against, still this is not enough to stop the war. We see a constant blockage by Russia and other countries, just four, Russia, North Korea, Eritrea, Belarus, and Syria, which uh, seems to be like a new ex of evil, are blocking uh, international forests and uh, doing everything to let Russia continue its barbaric aggression against, civil, uh, against Ukrainian civilians. And uh, we also see that Russia, uh, despite all these measures taken, keeps uh, trying uh, in a way to humiliate the Western countries. You perhaps have heard about Russian demand to be paid uh, in rubles, in Russian rubles, against the they exported. But uh, uh, I'm uh, very pleasantly surprised that uh, European countries uh, said, sent a very strong signal that they would not tolerate such behavior. There are commercial contracts. They require payment in dollars and euros. And this is not the way how Russia could avoid uh, sanctions, financial sanctions imposed on Russia so far. Mr. Bukovic, let me circle back to something you mentioned there in that answer around chemical weapons and the potential for that, because there is a lot of discussion uh, for example, the U.S. talking about some intelligence it has about the potential for Russia to do that and blame Ukraine for it. Do, do you think that uh, that the, chem the use of chemical weapons will change the response from the West? Because I have noticed a number of the leaders have, have received questions from reporters saying, is that a red line for you? Is that where, you, you know, direct engagement begins? And they won't they won't say yes. They won't say it is a red line. Do you what, what is your perception? What have your conversations been like? I'm afraid this is not a red line. Uh, from today's NATO and G7 summit, Ukraine and Ukrainian people has received a very single uh, message. There is no way NATO will be engaged in direct, uh, in direct conflict with Russia, and we have to rely on our own. And however uh, bitter for Ukraine to hear that, we quite understand the situation, the reality. We are, as President Zelensky said, we are not accusing anyone. We just want NATO and G7 to take a number of steps. The first to protect our skies. This is a bit from Ukrainian people, shelter our skies and we will handle the rest. Please provide us with lethal, uh, required lethal weapons, entire, entire missile systems, air defense system, 
please keep providing us with weapons to protect ourselves. And uh, we, we are prevailing e even under current circumstances. Uh, we are prevailing, we are counterattacking. We are absolutely confident in our victory, but unless NATO, uh, NATO member countries, G7 countries would not keep putting a lot of sanction pressure, pressure on Russia, unless they would not provide enough of financial, military and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine, Russia won't stop. Even now we see that uh, the uh, rate of support in Russia grows toward this cynical aggression on Ukraine. And there are a lot of many calls to, uh, to extend so-called military operation against Poland or Baltic countries. So it's quite logical and rational to support and reinforce Ukraine to the extent that Russia would stop, would have a total defeat in Ukraine, would be thrown back to its uh, borders. And I'm absolutely confident that in turn, it will start the process of uh, Russian empire collapse on the path of more democratic and civilized state. I just have about a minute left, Mr. Bookfish. Your question, there is no way we can stop prevent Russia from doing any sort of barbarian actions, including using of chemical weapons. And uh, it won't be a red line for West. Under, understood, and I appreciate the answer. I, I just really quickly, given that you have conversations with the Canadian government, there have been shipments and supplies of lethal aid sent from Canada to the Ukrainian military. But right now, Canada's own supply, the defense minister says, has been exhausted. The prime minister said today that they're working with partners, though, to get more lethal aid to Ukraine. Do you have any idea what that will look like? Well, uh, I'm absolutely pleased to see how quickly and promptly uh, Canadian government, government of Canada, uh, Minister of National Defense works and cooperate with us. It's true that as of today, we have almost depleted the um, financial resources committed to uh, procuring of lethal weapons to uh, reinforce Ukraine. And I hope, and because now it's obvious that despite these, all these defeats, military defeats in Russia, uh, Russian troops won't stop. They keep getting commands from Kremlin to go on uh, whatever losses uh, they have. It seems that this struggle of Ukrainian peoples uh, against Russia will continue for the next several months at least. And we need a backup, financial uh, backup as well. And I just hope, and this is my line of job, to communicate with uh, cabinet to provide more financial resources to procure more weapons whenever it possible, not probably only in Canada, but uh, at other countries. Okay. There are a lot of opportunities to reinforce Ukraine right now. And when it comes to increasing the financial uh, support, I think that cabinet can do that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your time as always, Mr. Bukvich. Thank you. Andriy Bukvich is uh, Ukraine's chargé d'affaires here in Canada. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.